Tessa Jeffers with PremierGuitar.com. I'm here with Judah Bauer with the John Spencer Blues Explosion at the Bottom Lounge in Chicago. How you doing? Good. Are you ready for tonight? That was a nice intro. Way to start it off. Finally made a rig rundown, you know. I'm, Are you a big fan? I've, I've watched a few. What was your favorite? The Nels Klein one was pretty good. He was very entertaining. So now it's your turn. So here get up to his level, but we'll see what happens. He's got a lot more pedals than I got. But Is probably. that your Fender Twin? Yeah, that's the 61 uh, brown face Twin. And uh, we got the new ribbon mic that we just started using today. That's just cool. today? Yeah, so supposedly it sounds really good. Usually I use a ribbon, but I was kind of lazy. And uh, I guess sure gave us that mic, so we're going to start using that. Because ribbons always go well with Telecasters. For the brightness, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm always running through this 61 and through this 59 Deluxe. And this one is just pretty much standard. And the only thing different on the 59 is I put in a, a JBL E120, which has got way more headroom. And I think it sounds a lot better uh, than the stock version of it. And is your twin stock? It should be, yeah. I don't. I haven't looked at it. I think it burned up a couple times, but I didn't lose anything valuable in it. So why do you choose to go through these two amps? Because they sound so good. Basically, that's it. I haven't found a better amp uh, than this one, and I don't get to use it all the time. So, but since we drove out of New York on this tour, I get to use all this. You drove. Yeah, because I don't like put them on airplanes. So. So what kind of tone are you going for then? Um just it's pretty limited you know it's just telly cranked you know <laughs> not not much it sound pretty loud so well i gotta play with russell simmons so he's pretty loud drummer so. so tell me what are you holding this was just made in the last couple months by my guy in new york his name is norio imai i-m-a-i if you want to look into it and uh basically he just finds telly Parts, fender parts that are this, the right weight and the right width that I like, and we just put them together. So, and he, these are refretted and refinished, and but otherwise they're pretty much standard fender parts. You know, like a lot these next match um, my '65 Tele that I love that I can't take out anymore. So this is kind of like they're both mock-ups of that. Um, otherwise, this is, they all have kills. Did you basically try to emulate that '65? Yeah, pretty much, because that guitar just seems to work for everything, so... Um, what about pickups? Are they all stuck? Well, that that one is, uh, I think that's just Seymour Duck, and he winds his own pickups, too. I'm not sure, though. I may. Is, did you say I may? Am I. Am I? And what's his first name? Norio. Norio a Am I? And he winds his own pickups. Yeah, he's, you know, he's a master. So, uh, I mean, he did a great finish job. Uh, I think the only thing that might be different is that there's some kind of capacitor he puts in here so I can roll off the volume and it won't get too dull because I use the volume knob a lot. And they all have secret kill switches in them, so only I can play them. <laughs> Nobody knows. Do you have to have, like, a combination? It's just a certain touch. Your voodoo? Yeah. Anyway, that's that one. This is new. So it's a little dull sounding. It takes a while for them to open up. Some, it takes about a year, I think, for them to really open up. But uh, this one I've been playing for 10 years. So this one sounds... Does it have a name? No, I don't have names for them. It's number one, though? By, and, yeah, pretty much. But they just go by the color. So this is the Sunburst one. And this is true to the telly. And that's all road-worn, right? Five. No, this is 10 years of... <laughs> I did this. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's blood and sweat. Oh, I thought it was one of the... You meant... No, like... Oh, I you you, the, that's the real deal. You road weren't things that... No, not really. In good conscience, I don't know if I could play. But they look pretty good. But yeah, this this is this is my main guitar for a while. I use it on the new record. And and I can lose it and not be too upset, you know. So just have your guy make you another one. 
Yeah, it's not a, it's not some vintage albatross. What about any? Are those your only two guitars for tonight? Yeah, this one's an open G, and this one's in standard. I use a bunch of other tunings over the last couple of years, but I've kind of whittled it down to just have two because I don't want to have to bring more than two guitars. You know, because when the air when the airlines lose them for a couple of days, you know, it's always traumatic. So two is, is the limit. And two amps, yeah. Did you also use a Gretsch on the album? Or are these pretty much you are all Telecaster? Yeah. Uh, I use this guitar on everything for the basics. I might, yeah, I use a Gretsch, I think, on just some overdubs and a, a Dan Electro baritone on some stuff. So your foot switches look pretty intense over here. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, these... This is the most important thing about my pedal board is that I get to that I use Fender foot selectors to turn them on and off for the for the pedal switcher. That was my main request. So and you could streamline it. Well, it just needs to look right, you know. And, and, and most foot switchers and pedal switchers just look wrong. So what do you mean by that? I don't like how they look, but only the Fender ones look like, like me, like square, simple, bulky, chauvinistic. I don't know. <laughs> These are more the way they need to be in my neuroses. Anyway, so, and the guy that made this switcher is some guy out of London. It's called Audio Kitchen. His name's Steve Crow, and I asked him, because I was looking around for a while, I couldn't find anything that I could use those Fender selectors on, so he made me this switcher, and it's just for, it runs three pedals, and I get to use the Fender switches. They're, they're a little modified. I'm not exactly sure what he did differently to them. He also made this big pedal here it's called a big tree and oh. it is an amp it can it, it's an amp it can run a cabinet but m main thing is just more tubes to run through because the more tubes the better I figure you're only using that on a few songs or no it's on all the time just so I can have you know, more distortion going on and I had to modify it so I could put a fender foot selector in it and use it as a boost pedal are you using any any other effects? I think you said you like you use delay. Yeah, I'm using more than I want to use already, but I have two delays, just a short delay, which I picked up a couple days ago. I think it was called On the Road was the guy. It was out of Portland, Maine. I don't remember his name. It seems to be working pretty good. And then it's just this cheap memory boy delay. It's just like the crazy delay. It doesn't really need to sound good. It just needs to be roadworthy. What about fuzz? Mm, I use the I use the phaser for fuzz. Uh, I just use it on like one or two songs. I don't know if I really need it. So you're kind of a fan of the natural sound, right? Yeah, I feel like I'm kind of already addicted to pedals more than I want to be. But I'll try to. Keep, I'm gonna. This is my limit. So and this box of rocks. I use it. That's you know, Europe. Yeah, it's a good pedal. But I can't take this big trees all the time because it's just too big, so I'll use this to break up the amp a little bit more. But I hardly, it, it's not much gain or drive on it. It's more just for pushing the volume. And these lelies are good. It's just for splitting the signal. Are there any songs that you're really enjoying playing live on this tour? Uh, Zimgar is a good one. That's the last track on the new record. Just because it's, you know, it's my feature piece. I guess like to play all my licks, my stolen licks, off of Roy <laughs> Buchanan and you know Hubert Sumlin and all that. So at least in my mind. So yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about your Evo? Uh, yeah, I'm, I got stuck with this maybe a couple records ago, just for having some freak effect going on. So I think I use it on. Uh, I can't remember how many songs. I know I use it on. Uh, Bear trap. Does it work like a slide or a capo, or? It's just a drone, you know. And uh, and if you use it with a slide, you can kind of get. It kind of sounds like a siren. <laughs> yeah, just for dramatic effects. It's like somebody called nine one one. So yeah, that and then. Uh, Play some harp through that 59 deluxe. It handles it pretty well with that big speaker. So, what kind of strings are you using? Yeah, I use uh, DR strings, the tight fit, and um, like 5211. 
on the standard and I go heavier on the open G. I think it goes down to 52, 211. And uh, they sound great, those strings. And the picks are Jim Dunlop, one millimeter. Thank you very much, Judah. Thank Have a fun you. show tonight. This is Tessa Jeffers for PremierGuitar.com.